Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Bella and I am your favorite online fashion tutor. Okay, so if you're just coming to our channel for the first time, you're welcome. Our returning subscribers, you're welcome as well. Please kindly subscribe to the channel, share our videos, like, comment. I like reading your comments, guys. So please comment, okay? And share our videos on your WhatsApp status, on Facebook, on your WhatsApp group, okay? All right. Let's go into today's topic. <laughs> so today's topic is something that is alarming. What I ordered versus what I got. You all can agree with me that in Nigeria today, the rate at which fashion designers are being dragged is, is unimaginable. Like the way they are being dragged these days is, is too much. It's too much and it's so unhealthy for a business. So here we are today to treat the topic, how to avoid it. So in this video, we are going to be looking at some of the factors that cause what I ordered versus what I got. Is who, Whose fault it is? Is it the designer's fault? Is it the customer's fault? Okay. So in this video, we are going to be treating some of those things. And if this is what you would like to know, if this is, if this is in your area of interest, keep on watching so the first thing on my list because i wrote everything down though i don't want to forget anything because the, the, it's paining me it's really really paining me so the first thing on my list is designers or tellers competence or skill you know this profession is just like any other profession there are stages in this profession we have beginner stage, we have intermediate stage, we have advanced stage before we even get to the professional stages. And in this profession, in this uh, career, career path, there is nothing like professional, even if you're more, more, much more advanced, even the professionals still learn. You can agree with me that even in school, professors still go for training. Our school professors still go for training. Our university professors still go for training. So, so likewise in this fashion, professors go for training. Okay? So, now, talking about the teller's competence or skill, you can't expect a baby nurse in the hospital to come and do major operation. It's not even done. Like, you can't expect an a, a auxiliary nurse to come and attend to um, a high-profile case in the hospital is is not done, or you can't uh, expect a, a student police to to go into field work, field mission, undercover work with, without graduating. Like it's not done. So likewise in this fashion business, you can't be a beginner, and you're ready collecting dresses that is for a professional or advanced or an intermediate level you first of all read a before you read b so tell us in this number one i will say that the fault if the fault is from the teller's competence i will say it's from both the teller and both the customer you as a customer before you give out your dress or your fabric to any tailor, you should have seen their previous works. You should have seen what they can do, what they are capable of. You don't just bring a 50,000 naira shibi to, to give to a tailor that just started. There are tailors or designers and there are pako. Like, do you know how they say, this one is not say design. In Igbo language, like a quack nurse, that's how we have carpenter tellers. So you don't expect a carpenter teller to come and be sewing Vicky James style for you, or to come and be sewing um, 
what's another bring big big brand prudential style for you it's, it's not even it's not even possible so you as a, a as a as a customer that carried your shape of 50k to go and give that kind of a tailor you are part of the problem because probably you've gone to a bigger brand and they charged you the worth of that dress you want to make and you tell them i have a tailor that can sew it cheaper and obviously the beginner or the the amateur the amateur tailor doesn't know what it entails to replicate that style and you know the funniest thing some of these customers they will go on a big brand page to lift a style on instagram then they'll come to a, a an amateur tailor to give it to them simply because they charge them less and after charging them less now what will not happen we'll start seeing pictures flying all over the internet twitter instagram facebook what i ordered versus what i got customers please repent then you that is an auxiliary teller if there is a word like that you that is a beginner teller like you know you're not skilled enough to collect that work you ask them to bring it because of the money ujukukuru your longer truth because of the money then you're not forgetting that you're building a brand dragging social media brand have don't you hear what people normally say that um the the internet never forgets one, you're closing doors for potential customers. You're closing doors for, for future investment in your business. After being dragged publicly, it's not healthy for any brand. Even if you're getting, um, even if people are visiting your page during the time of dragging, it's not for good. Getting um, visitors to your page or, or subscribers or followers on your page at that moment of dragging is not for good it's not good so let us stop it okay if you know you're not skilled enough collect the works that you're skilled enough go for um go for trainings learn more there are no ways to learn more even if distance is a barrier Go for upgrade. Upgrade is a must. It is a must in capital. Upgrade is a must for every fashion designer. Even me, your teacher, is still upgrading. If I tell you how much I've spent learning corset since way back 2018. Since way back 2018. If I tell you how much this year I've spent not less than 100k on just corset class because there are there is one i did with a Ghanaian guy 35k then you do we will now do others from nigerian tailors too it's not that i don't know anything about corset see one thing about upgrade it's not that you don't know that particular topic but you just want to know how this person does his or her own to know if you relearn and unlearn to know if there is a better way to achieve it. To know if there is a faster means to achieve it. To know if there is any sewing tricks. It's not about just cutting it. Most people know how to cut it. To know if there is a sewing trick you will learn. It's not because I don't know how to sew corset. But I, I just feel like there is something else missing that I need that I saw in the other person's corset that I want to learn it. Sometimes in a, in a, a syllabus or in, a, in, in an outline of what a particular teacher is going to teach me, it might just be two things. Let's say the outline is like 10, 10 topics. It might just be two things that is dragging me to that class. It might just be two things that caught my attention to that class. And I will spend that money. You're investing in yourself. Why? Because I'm a teacher. I need to move. I need to upgrade so that my students will not be better than me. <laughs> because if you keep on with the knowledge you got from your, your madame, your fashion school, where you learned, my dear, the world is moving very, very fast. And you'll be left behind. 
and that is not good for any business. You need to grow as the world is growing and one of the fastest growing um, career or profession in this Nigeria right now is the fashion, fashion aspect. New styles every day, new drama every day, like the styles these days, I call them drama because sometimes you'll be looking at them and be wondering, is it the same God that created these people that is bringing out the style that created me and you? So you need to upgrade because even professionals upgrade, even those big, big brands, some people upgrade in dollars. They tell you how, how many millions they use in, in upgrading with foreigners. People that travel far, even physically, they pay for hotel, they pay for flight, they pay for how many days they're going to stay there just to get an upgrade on a particular cost. In this fashion business, so everybody needs to upgrade. If you're a beginner, stick with beginner's course. Master it, learn it. Your foundation is very, very important. Learn it first before moving over to intermediate course. Then before advancing to advanced, before taking on other, other, other courses. Okay? Upgrade is a must, my dear designers, my, my fellow designers. My brothers and sisters, upgrade is a must. We must upgrade, okay? So I've talked more on this number one. Then number two is lack of professional advice. In this lack of professional advice, we have shape, we have size, we have fabric type, fabric texture and quantity. <laughs> Dear designers, this is your field. This is your profession. So you need to be giving professional advice. I know that some people don't used to agree. Oh, yes, I know. I've come across some customers that, ha, no matter what you tell them, they will agree. That thing that is on their mind is what they will do. And if you don't sew for them, they will carry it to another teller. And it's even better they should carry it to another teller. You will save yourself public disgrace and your brand public shame. From dragging what I ordered versus what I got. Because I tell you, if they refuse to follow your professional advice, that dress is going to end in premium tears. Yes. It's going to end in premium tears. So, you need to advise a client. If, if, if I'm doing online consultation and you send a style for me, the next thing I'm going to tell you is send me your picture. I won't ask you what's your size or UK size 12. Yeah, and nah, 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 nah. Send me your picture, not six months ago. We are recent picture, a day, two days, one week, mass. Before we even dive into other things, to save myself unnecessary stress, maybe after going far, even doing calculation pricing, then I'll find out that your my size, and you want to sew a dress that was draped on a mannequin of size eight. It won't work. Even if I get that dress, your 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 size won't like your body won't bring it out perfectly. We're not here to body shame. I'm a plus size. Everybody know I'm a plus size. Mommy J is a plus size. Labella is a plus size. Yes, I know. But me, I, before I saw any dress for myself, I look for styles that um plus size has modeled. And they are good, and it doesn't even stop there. That plus size has modeled it. Is are you the same size with the plus? Like are you the same shape with the plus size? Because there are plus sizes, but there are different sh shapes. Yes, we can be the same size, but have different shapes. I might mean, have a large uh, b uh, down part and a slimmer upper part, and the model, the, the, the her oh, whole body is proportional. And I'll not cancel what she made. And I'll be feeling for like I'll be feeling I'll look like what I don't know inside the dress. So sizes and shapes work hand in hand. Even if you're a size eight and the model is size eight, please look at the shape. Are they the same shape? Will this dress look perfect on this client? Talk to them, advise them that this is good and this is not good. 
This will match your body perfectly and this will not match your body perfectly. Perfectly. Give your professional advice and if they refuse to listen, let them go elsewhere. You must not sew for everybody. That is one thing we fail to understand. You mustn't sew for everybody. Everybody is not your customer. You're building a brand. You're building a future. You must not sew for everybody. Then coming to um, fabric type, texture, quantity. See, you cannot bring a dress that was made with 12 years of Ankara for me. I am bringing three years. I'm not a magician. It won't work. Do it like that. Manage it like that. You don't know how to manage clothes. You this tell. Thank you. But it won't work. I'm not a magician. They are coming to fabric type. A lot of us, we get, we have the skill, we do the work properly, but our fabric will kill, will murder that style. Please, when they bring a fabric that is not good for a style, tell them, this can't work, this will work, this one cannot work. Myself now, I don't use bridal satin shiny face. In Nigeria, in Nigeria we have two types. We have a um, dull face and shiny face. For me, as my as a brand, I don't use shiny face. If a customer brings shiny face, I won't sew for you. Especially when I know that you post and tag me, <laughs> my dear sister, please, I won't sew for you with that shiny face. Brands now don't even big brands don't don't even use dull face anymore. We, they use crepe. They use um. There's one. There's one fabric I saw on Sugarzim. I be Sugarzim last week. Like if you see this fabric, oh god, that's what they used to inlining their their laces now, and it will be like to be perfect on the person's body. So you cannot bring a style that a, a celebrity or a, a, a top brand used crepe or that, that I've forgotten the name of that fabric. If I remember it, I'll write it on the screen. It's on Sugasm. So Sugasm. I can't remember their names. Okay. So they use that kind of fabric that will that will relax well on the body. And so you now want me to use tafeta. You now want me to use shiny face. At least our face is even uh, much more better. We have Duchess. Okay, Duchess is even Duchess self is expensive. We have Duchess. Last time I put Duchess in on size 1000 naira. We have Duchess. We have Crab. We have um Doll Face. You now want me to use Tafeta because that's what you can afford. Sorry, I won't sew for you. As uh, me as a brand, I don't use other lining. There's what we call other lining in Nigeria. I use pure cotton lining. I've rejected the work that as the person has even agreed to my workmanship of ten thousand naira. Yes, but because she says she can't afford my cotton lining, cotton lining is four hundred four fifty. She said she can't afford four fifty. That she used other lining of two hundred naira. That's what she can afford. Because if you watch my pricing video, the, the, the pricing video I did previously, you will notice how I charge. I charge workmanship separately and the materials and costs of your materials separately. So she has agreed to my own workmanship of 10K of a, of a simple Ankara dress. And now the, she agreed to other materials. We, we are now dragging line. That she can't pay 450 for pure cotton lining that I should go and use upper lining of 200 naira. I said no. She said no. What will happen? She carry that fabric and go. I'm not bothered. She patronized that didn't stop her from patronizing me again. But at that moment, she might not have it. And I can't not bend my rules because working upper line is even a head like a big headache to you. So I cannot bend my rules for anybody. And she left. And we are good. There's nothing like what I ordered because our lining can disgrace you. 
before you know it, it just starts tearing anyhow. Like it's so soft, I can't use it. So, guys, always give your professional advice. Make sure that the size of the model and the size of the muse is the same, or even if it's not the same, like it will fit them. Like it will fit them. Then you watch out for shapes too. You can you can't see somebody that is have a very very flat flat tummy and you want to make the same dress for somebody that has a big tummy that looks like she's most pregnancy and another thing they will refuse to wear um shapers it won't work it won't just work so let's try to advise them or you can bring fabric that is not even close to what they used or a lesser quantity and I expect the tailor to do magic. This contributes to what I order. By the time you're trying to manage and manage and manage and manage and manage, you won't get it right. You're not a, you're not a magic champ. So please, let us always tell our customers. Let's give them professional advice. And if they refuse, let them go. Just save yourself the stress. Okay? Number three, price. I wrote in my book, don't be afraid to do your calculations and call your price. Call your price with boldness, dear fashion designers. Call your, pri your price with boldness. There is nothing wrong in when a customer brings a dress to you, like a picture sample, and you tell them I'll get back to you. You go and do your market survey. The prices of things are escalating every day. It, like... The price of thing of, of 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 materials in the market is is going high, skyrocketing every day. You need to do your market survey. You need you need to do research of the current prices. Like in my pricing video, I said I have some handles I follow that sells all those stuffs. I know that Instagram prices might be a little bit on the higher side. Like if they're selling this particular something on Instagram, one thousand naira. I know it will not be. I just bought it eight hundred naira for it. Okay. So if you're following all these people, you already it's not much you carry. You enter transport, enter moto, go to the market, start pricing them, do window shopping. No, you can do it online. Okay. There's an applique I saw for thirty k on Instagram. When I reached the market, it was twenty seven k. You see the difference of, but I'll, I'll, I already know how much I'll tell my customer so that I will not shoot myself on the leg. So you can't just start um, giving out prizes when you've not done your necessary, the necessary things you're supposed to do. Like, know the necessary prices of those things in the market. If, it's a, if, it's, it, if it was embellished, you know how much the embellishment cost, you know? So we need to do our pricing right. If you've not watched my pricing video, please go back and watch it. it the link will be in the description box below. We need to get our pricing right, okay? So that you don't end up in premium tiers. And this also will make you to work. Because sometimes at the end of the day, when you see that the, what you charge for that particular dress is not worth it, you'll be feeling reluctant. And you will not buy the exact thing that was used on a dress. And it will turn to what I ordered versus what I got. You can't compare an applique that was used on a dress, applique of, of 30K. Then you now charge, the, the, the whole amount you even charge for the dress is now up to 30K. When you reach the market, you now start looking for, looking for cheaper ones to use. The customer will not agree because it's your price, what you called for them. So sometimes I don't really blame I don't really come on the comment section of what I ordered versus what I got to start saying price because it's what you caught for them. You agree they didn't use gun or knife to to surrender you and say you must collect these clothes. It is the price you gave the person that the person paid. So I don't really blame customers when they pay cheap for a, a, a dress worth four hundred k. They paid twenty k for it. It is you that is the designer that made the mistake. So you should bear the loss. That is why you need to sit down, take your paper and pen, calculate, go on the internet, look for those similar stuffs, know their prices, then put them down. When you're giving your price, you know that this is the price of, of what all the material needed for that dress will cost. And this is my workmanship. 
So that at the end of the day, you don't use your money to go and buy fabric or you don't use your money to go and buy um, accessories for a dress without gain. You'll be working without gain. Doesn't make sense. So get your pricing right. Don't just be in a rush to call price. You see, ah, Chevy is this dress. Just bring 20k. After telling the customer 20k, the customer will still price it down to like 15k. But why the, 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 the applique on that dress alone is, is like 10k? It doesn't make sense. So, guys, let's get our pricing right, okay? So, the fourth one is proper measurements. Please don't assume. That somebody is size 8 doesn't mean that her, her nipple to nipple, her bust span is always 7 or 8. Take proper measurement. That, that, is, that the person is a plus size doesn't mean her, her shoulder to waist is always 18. Take proper measurement. African women body differs. That's why sometimes you will see a, so just one person. Her upper part, so maybe her bust is UK size 10. Her hip is size 14. Her, her waist is UK size 16. Like, our bodies are not the same. That's why sometimes it doesn't work for us that way. You need to take proper measurements. If the person is not close to you, do an online consultation. Let them get... The cheapest tepro is 50 naira in the Nigerian market. Tell your client to get a tepro. You will teach... I have a video I sent to my customers. If they are not near me, they will watch how to take their measurement themselves. Or we do an online consultation and I'll be saying it virtually that, yes, this is they got, they got it right. I don't even trust measurements that were sent. I don't, I don't trust it 100%. I prefer the one that we are talking face to face. You're taking the measurements and I'm seeing it and I'm approving it right away. That one gives me, that one gives me more confidence. That yes, this is your actual measurement. Don't assume anybody's measurement. Except you have the measurement in your measurement book. Then if the measure... If I take a measurement last year, I'm not going to use it for you this year. No. If I take it six months ago, I'll, t I'll actually... The clothes I made for you six months ago is still sizing you very well. If yes, I'll, tell you, I'll, I'll also ask you to send a picture of your current self. We can lose weight, we can add weight any day, any time. So don't just assume, please. Some of us are still using the measurement we took the person, even before the person got married. And after the lady got married, she gave birth. And it, it will end up in premium tears, my sister. It will end up in premium tears. Let's stop it. Take proper measurement. You have a smartphone, do online consultation. Okay? Draft your pattern well. If you're a freehand person, fine. Just do it well. Know your skills. Okay? Then another thing is, always let your customers know it won't come out exact because you're not the original designer. If they want it exact, if they want it original photocopy, they should go to the place they picked the style from. They should go to the designer that made the original designer. You know, sometimes we get inspiration just watching movies, thinking about other stuffs. Fashion design is just like an artwork. You can replicate even the designer sometimes. There are some styles that I'll just, as I'm looking at the fabric, the inspiration is coming, everything is coming. If I don't jot it down, I will forget what I made, how I made that dress. Like, I'll forget how, how I come up with that design, especially if I'm not copying anybody, I'm just doing my thing. Sometimes I forget, not to talk of another person's style, that you don't know if it was a mistake turned to, to, to style. You know, sometimes you make a mistake and just automatically turn into a style. You don't know, you'll be killing yourself trying to get it exact. It's not possible. Please let your customers know. I always write a disclaimer at the end of every conversation I have with my customers. I'll tell them, this style you sent to me is, is serving as a style inspiration or a source of style inspiration. We are going to just draw inspiration from it and try to recreate with our touch, with a labella's touch. And I'll ask them to agree to it and they will agree to it. 
That's why I always make my conversation on WhatsApp. I take it very, very serious. I, I, I always make sure they agree to the conversation. So that in any day, any time, anything comes up, it serves as an evidence for me. A documented evidence. So if you've not watched that pricing video, you should go and watch it. Okay? Always let them know that it will not come out exactly the same way. Because a lot of things can change. Sometimes they can, it, it, the fabric might affect the outcome. The, the person's body might affect the outcome. Or something else might come up. Well, we might change our click. Just let them know it won't come out the same way. Then another thing is changing a style a bit. You will see a style that it is that is too sleeveless. You want a sleeve for yours. You want the slit that was high to be low, like it should be moderate. The the the, the boobs that was showing. You want yours covered. Do you know that all those things are what really made the, that dress beautiful? Then after changing everything. You don't stop, you, you still picture the original design that that is what you're getting. It doesn't work that way. Always let them know that once you change, even if it's just as simple as a color or as simple as add a strap, a spaghetti strap to it, the style is changed automatically. The other one is just a style inspiration that we are using to draw out your new style. If you can sketch, please sketch. Some brands charge for sketching. In fact, some brands charge for consultation alone because they are going to sketch, they are going to do um swatch, fabric swatch, you know, they are going to do a lot of things during consultation. That's why they charge more. That is why they charge more. So you need to put all these things into consideration. You can't tell me to cover your boobs. You can't tell me to cover your laughs. You can't just tell me to change an entire Beyonce dress to a, 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 a sister, like a, 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 a reverend sister dress. They are two opposite things. They can't work. They can't be the same. They can't look alike. It's, it's not even possible to work. So always tell them, once you change it, even if it's a sleeve, this one doesn't have sleeve. You ask me to put a sleeve. The style has changed. Don't be imagining it in your, because all this kind, they'll just, they'll still be thinking about that original style, that that is what they will be getting. That's how it will be on their body. Like you cover up the boobs, just like this clothes I'm wearing now, everywhere is covered. But the original style I saw, some parts are revealing. I'm not expecting it to look again the same. It's not even possible. It cannot give me the same result. So let's stop deceiving ourselves and save ourselves the stress and embarrassment. Tell them, let them know you're not getting exactly the same thing. I always, always especially a custom made dress, I always, as she be a trad wedding, I always let them know that you cannot get it exact. The one you sent to us is just to draw inspiration from. We are going to put a touch of labella there. So that they will not come and be dragging anybody. This is my small body. You now you now want to come and finish dragging this my small body for me. Please, oh. So guys, please let us always tell them. Please, let's always tell them. Okay? You're a brand. Stick to it. Build it. Okay? So the final thing I'm going to be talking about is fitting. Sometimes, little mistakes, we are not perfect. Little things can be corrected during fitting. Do you know that most of these are our celebrity brands? They do the first fitting, second fitting, third fitting, fourth fitting, fifth fitting. Like, they do fitting a lot. And, and inside the fitting, you're wasting time. You're wasting energy. They charge for it. That's why you need to charge very well. You hear just they made it 800k, 1 million, 700k. You be shouting, ah, God. They do fitting. And before someone will count out 800k in this economy and pay a designer, they will create time to come for fitting. But our 5,000 naira clients will not even create small time to come for just one. Just one. 
And you, as a teller, you're encouraging them. You will put... You have already put your appliques, you have already put everything, even the one you hand stitch, you put everything, you want it to be perfect. When they come, there's nothing wrong in making a perfect dress. It gives me joy when my customers come and everything is perfect. But then there is needs for fitting, especially when you've not made a dress for that person before. So our bodies differ. There's a dress I made for someone her. She's she's a slim person and I make dresses for slim people so I, it doesn't do anything but knowing to me she has big laughs like I didn't take note of that by the time I finished doing all the tightening all the shaping and everything when the day she came for um fitting it was I wanted to cry I wanted to cry because the laughs couldn't enter she's slim but then she has big laughs I didn't take note of it I had to start losing, I had to start looking for pieces up and down, like it was so stressful. So all these kind of things can be avoided during fitting. There are some what I ordered, but is what I I got that I see it online and I say that this is just simply a fitting stuff. You just shape it and touch here and there and everything will be okay. The sewing was okay. So guys, please encourage fitting. There are some people that will just like I do it most times. I do it sometimes, and you know we learn every day. Sometimes we just pause. Hey, she didn't come for fitting. I know we are trying to gain confidence. I, I me too. When I'm writing it, I'm not writing it to brag or bold. I'm just writing it so that customers can have confidence in my brand. That even if they do not come for fitting, their clothes will be perfect. But it's not good. It's not good. We should we shouldn't encourage it. Fitting is okay. Those celebrities you see, they make out time to come for fitting, even up to five times, they come for fitting. But our 5K clients do not even come for fitting for a day. And it's not good. So always come for fitting. In, in fitting, you see so many errors, I incorrect it. So guys, have you subscribed? Even up to this moment, have you subscribed? Please subscribe, boo. So guys, with these few points of mine, I hope I've trashed out some points that we need to avoid what I ordered versus what I got. Till we meet again, I am your favorite online fashion tutor, La Bella. See you guys. Bye.